I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me and uh, for following Walls and Sprint to put up this session. Uh, it's an important topic, I think, mindset. Uh, and I try to gather for you some thoughts about my past 15 years of investment and involvement with startups, but also borrowing from experience at a company called Express, which I will give you a few nuggets of information. But as we talk about science partnership, which is this symposium, and uh, I think a big player is Sprint here, I'm going to make some comments to show that how science partnership actually is so important and so impactful for the world. So we heard all of us about mindset, an entrepreneur mindset. Of course, another person is creative, has grit, is dedicated, has to iterate, has to pursue his passion or her passion. We all heard of that. I'm going to talk about something different today and talking about how we are more and more seeing a shift in society in terms of entrepreneur mindset. The world is more uniform. We get more people to participate. There is more observation of inclusive ideas, very different ideas, changing the status quo, changing the norms of what we do. So I'm calling this mission-oriented entrepreneurship, which is a different mindset. So I'm talking about a shift in, in, uh, in mindset. So if we look at this picture, um, we are all going to be seeing something different, interpreted in many ways. It could be very creative. It could be very organized. But what I try to suggest in this idea is the entrepreneurial energy, this Brownian movement that happens around the world about solving a problem, about tackling some social aspect, about making things better, about fighting, about doing something. So this entrepreneur activity is, is everywhere. And I try to use Google Trends to bring you some examples of what people search around the world, because everybody's searching. And some of these searches are translated into entrepreneur ideas or solving some acute problems. So here's some examples of searches that have happened. And you can see that, and this is across from 2004 to 2022. So it's aggregate around many, many years. So the top, uh, the top answers are there. Obviously, there are more answers somewhere. But it shows you that uh, who is searching for entrepreneur mindset. And you can see that there are some countries asking for that. And some could be in 2004, some could be in 2010. But this is the aggregate. And if you look at science entrepreneurship, again, the distribution is not everywhere. If you talk about startup funding, there's a lot of people searching about startup funding everywhere, or about food security. So you can see that people's attention and desires are different based on where they are and what they're focusing on and what they're uh, about to look at. And, and I put another example as well. And this one is about other type of questions, which is interesting. If we ask about predicting the future, well, not every country is asking the question on Google about predicting the future. So it can give you a bias about how many people are thinking about that. Not that people are not thinking about the future, but they're not asking the question on Google, or not enough. But if you look at manipulation, suddenly you have a lot of queries about manipulation in many, many other countries, or future of work. So there are topics that people care about, that are interested in, and they, they want to pursue. So that probably is a first signal about where people are thinking about solving problems. Acute problems, important problems for them is about happiness, about nature of work. So this is a global, uh, global aspect. So people find their inspirations in many ways. And I'm going to borrow three examples today to give you, among many others, of inspiration, where people those inspiration are found and how this contributes to an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, one example I want to borrow with you is a film that was made um, a few years ago by a filmmaker called Jan Artus Bertrand. I don't know how many of you know this film or have you seen it. It's about a photographer that spent two years capturing people's stories. Um, over the course of two years, about 2,000 people were interviewed one by one. And the idea was, I want to capture what people think, what people dream about, what people try for. And that led to a movie uh, about six hours movie called Human, which was a tapestry of all of us. And again, the idea was to show the diversity of our thinking, our desires, our hopes, our fears, our dreams. And many of them are resembling. And if you look at the film, there's interesting ideas that someone in Ho Chi Minh City may have the same idea as someone in Buenos Aires. How interesting, or not interesting, but is, is observing to see that this happened. The same experiment or similar experiment was done uh, in 2010 and 2020 by two filmmakers, Ridley Scott and Kevin McDonald. And they asked the crowd, 
not about what problem you want to solve, but ask, send us a picture or a short video about what you do today. On one given day, and they collected about 50,000 hours of footage uh, and more than 200,000 submissions, and they created a 90-minute movie about the zeitgeist of the world, what the world is doing today. On a given day, in July of 2020, this is what the world, some people are giving birth, some people solving for a problem, some people pitching a startup, some people climbing a tree, some people uh, finding the keys, some people parking their car, some people fighting, some people dreaming, etc. So these are examples of the fact that around the world, everybody's trying to find solution or asking questions. How many of those translated to entrepreneurship is an important question. So one framework, uh, and I tried to show this picture, but it doesn't show very well here, that was supposed to show the world with lights on. And everywhere in the world, there is uh, someone working on a topic, so very similar to what I showed you before. And if you zoom in that world, you're gonna see that there are communities working on similar problems. People are working together, they're working with each other on some problems. You don't know what those problems are, but you saw some examples of some of those problems. So where the inspiration comes, where people are either having their own ideas or they come up with a framework of possibilities. So we're looking for problems. What are those problems? Where well, one framework of problem are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We had the Millennium Goals before. In 2015, the UN basically created a new framework called Sustainable Development Goals with 17 goals, which gives a very clear set of ideals that we need to solve towards a better humanity, better society, and going from no poverty to no hunger to better innovation and saving the oceans and collaborating together. And that's a very good framework because it gives a number of indicators and metrics of progress. So if someone wants to innovate within those areas, they have at least to some targets to reach out. Most entrepreneurs don't have targets to reach. They have their own ideas. They're trying to go somewhere. Those targets are not easy to reach, but people are trying and working. And most of the ideas of entrepreneurship surrounding those ideas are not commercially viable, unfortunately, because they're part of the common good. They're part of making society better. So sustainability is, is at risk. And if you look at, if I zoom in one of them, you can see that there is a maze of connectivity. If I want to solve for health, I need to solve for clean water. So if I clean, solve for clean water first, maybe it's going to impact solving for health more. So there is this web of connectivity. And the question is that why, where as an entrepreneur, I would put my thinking to work on? Where, where should I focus on? Should I focus on this node or that node, where I'm going to be best at, where's the basic better community, how much science can be utilized. So that gives you an idea about the maze that we are working on. And this is the maze I showed you before. Another example of a maze, if for scientists and technologists, there are something called um, tech trees. And this is an example of a tech tree on longevity. So if we want to live longer or fight cancer, it has a number of milestone-driven points and data points about what is to be solved in sequence to get to that endpoint. So as a scientist, I may be focusing on one of these nodes and trying to solve for that node. I may focus on a longer term node. The longer term node might become a startup right now. It could be more of a grant research. But how do I participate in this whole web is the, the question. So as a mindset building effort, the question goes back to where I want to put my effort on and what type of problem I would like to solve. Another example, which is now closer to what Sprint is doing, is my own company. Uh, which is using science fiction as an inspiration. Not a tech tree, not the United States of Rome, but a very hard problem. And the idea was teleportation. Can we move teleportation? Well, it was not possible. So we did the design framework about six years ago and tried to replicate a human presence somewhere else by AI and machine learning and robotics. And eventually, we launched a prize called the Avatar Prize, which actually ended this past weekend. That the winner is a German team from University of Bonn. They won the, they won the $5 billion Price, and they were able to actually put an, a non-trained uh, operator behind a glove and a system and to drive this robot perfectly in a remote distance. So the promise was done that so this is the hello world of robotics, of telepresence, but this hello world was done. So another way to get people excited and put their mindset at, uh, at work is to give them a very big challenge. Another one which was living in space, that was the inspiration, that was also the first the previous one was the last X Prize. This was the first X Prize, where the idea was to create a plane that will go to the atmosphere. And that created about uh, more than a few hundred companies. There was 27 teams started, but 
almost a trillion dollar industry was born out of that, and now the space industry is born, and this guy has basically exploited the, the intellectual property. So entrepreneurs are everywhere. Their mindset is sometimes trying to find the best ideas and leverage them, or to find opportunities to work on a hard problem. There's a differentiation there. So as they say, the best way to predict the future is to create it yourself. And that's saying that you have heard before. So we took the matters in our hand and tried to do it. So the proposal I'm trying to get you to think about is that how about we say the best way to build the future is to create it together. Because we're all going to be on one note somewhere, trying hard, and trying to connect the dots. And how can we do that other than working together? Because there is problems are everywhere, and our mindset is to shift towards a collective approach. So the approach matters. So we talk about entrepreneurship and mindset of entrepreneurship, about being creative and create value and create opportunities and create wealth and solve problems. Maybe the answers could be different by saying, we need to start with a problem first. So this is what I'm trying to suggest, is that the best entrepreneur mindset is to look at the problems that are more essential and finding that solution comes much faster if the problem is well-defined. But also is about first principle thinking is about not working with analogy. We're all using existing frameworks to borrow and to replicate that. And scientists are the best one to be positioned to do first principle thinking and to establish basically a different fr framework. I'm sorry. So about connecting the dots, you saw I showed you many dots in the diagram. It's connecting the dot and creating exchange for impact. So I'm going to finish by two examples and ask you what you see in that picture. So obviously, you see a tennis player, a champion, an athlete. Uh, you see someone dedicated to win with a sense of anticipation. But also, I can see that as a scientist, I can see material science to build new shoes that could get the performance to this athlete, or a bare racket, or some uh, machine vision that could help the athlete be trained. So how we look at problems and how we choose to find where we're going to put our attention is, is the new entrepreneurship mindset. And if I had to finish with one other example, is that, in fact, entrepreneurship is about a relay course, is that we're going to win together. We pass on the relay. We are part of a node. We do the best that we can in one node. But it's a collective effort and problems that needs to be solved are global and very much the same. And if we can find a way to collectively work on them and to find frameworks which governments and policymakers can support, it will probably change the way we think about entrepreneurship and the mindset could shift. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Amir. Um, saw a picture of uh, Richard Branson, wasn't it? That's what I was thinking of. I just couldn't think of it. Um, no, I mean, that's, I, I quite genuinely think, you know, sort of space, uh, tourism and all that, you know, it started in some dark days when nobody was thinking about space and then a whole bunch of people got together and said, let's try to do this. So that's, there was a serious point to my um, um, loose tongue before. Thank you very much. We've got time for one quick question. Who hasn't asked a question? Put your hand up, please, now. You, that, that was a really good, some good thoughts in there. Shift your thinking. No? Yes, excellent. Person in the front with the striped uh, costume there. Wait for the microphone. Excellent. Thank you. So in terms of working together and solving problems as a collective, do you think there are could be or should be a way of how we, you know, get rid of competition, a little bit at least. Because still all startups need to make profit or want to make profit, or do we maybe change the way we set up a startup or the way we get funding, you know? Well, you can see some early signs of demand from the bottom up, right? It's just the DAOs and all this tokenization and communities of participation where we share IP, we share things. is a, a, a starting, right? element of signaling of that demand. But it needs some governance. It's really basically a mechanism of recognition where there is a common good where knowledge has to be disseminated. More people have to be trained. So we cannot shortcut that approach. But at the same time, we want to collaborate on, for instance, carbon, carbon capture. How many people can work on carbon capture? We can all work together. If there is a roadmap of what if we go from where to where, and everybody piece, take a piece of that, we're going to go faster than just each of one of us trying to solve one specific part of that node. The Apollo was launched with 100,000 people working together to go to the moon. So if we can figure out from both sides, from policy and support and engineering, social engineering and funding to 
initiate and innovate on collective creativity and collective collaboration. I think we're gonna not duplicate, but probably initiate even more innovation by allowing to collectively build pieces that are needed. And I think that's the mindset that we need to promote and not the mindset of competition. So I'm working on competitions, so is Print and others, but competition is a way to engage, right? It's like, it's like a way to, to get people's attention on a momentum that needs to be built. But if you can figure out how to write, write those new rules and to have enough examples and promote and create the right incentives, I think we can probably cross cross-border innovate and uh, collectively do it. There's a lot of talk about Europe uniting together, but... Uh, Sorry? Europe uniting? Yeah, there is a lot of... <laughs> That's next year's symposium. Amir, after we're going to have to chase you along here. Thank you. Amir Banifatami, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Excellent stuff. Right.